Hi, I'm Tamara, and um, I'm the author of Natural Remedies for Dog Anxieties. I have a um, I work with um, with animals as an osteopath and um, a homeopath and a holistic care practitioner. I guess you could say it's a naturopath. I'm certified in acupuncture and various types of of body work uh, for animals, and um, but this book is about anxieties. Um, 90% of my clients that come in uh, talk about how their, their pets have anxieties. And so this book is like a, an ultimate guide uh, with things that have worked, um, tried and true homeopathic remedies that have worked. Um, it includes uh, how um, a little bit about my story, um, how you can heal your pet's anxiety, how do dogs show anxiety, what is your dog's internal clock, its daily time clock, what, why do dogs have anxiety, nutrition, nutrition can cause anxiety, um, why do I, how, do, how to know if your dog is feeling pain, this is a big one because dogs usually try to hide that, um, natural modalities and how to use them, separation anxiety, uh, fear of storms, barking incessantly, fear of being touched, fear of the opposite sex, travel anxiety. And um, this is for, it's written for dogs. Um, however, uh, there are some things that uh, um, uh, you can't give to cats and some things you um, you can do more with horses. So if, um, this book can also be applicable to both because we've outlined what you can use and what you can't use with different types of animals. So, and it, it also finishes with affirmations because um, um, affirmations and visualizations are a natural part of communicating with your pet. So, um, I'm going to just, this particular uh, session, this particular, if you want to call it episode, is about talking about my story and this, and it's titled Synchronicity. Okay, so I'm going to read the first chapter and um, and then if you have any questions at the end, please, um, I'll, I'll respond to all of your questions. Okay, so I grew up in a household with lots of animals. Initially, we had two dogs and a kitten, then each of us three girls were allowed to have our own small pet. Uh, I had a parakeet while my sisters chose a hamster and a guinea pig, and then a macaw and a cockatiel from my mother. Then two female stray cats found us, and before we knew we could do anything, we had two litters of kittens. It was a total of 28 animals gracing our lives. Although we lived with, uh, with many animals, the most amazing thing was our day-to-day -day life was not chaotic. In fact, the animals smoothly integrated into a beautiful rhythm within our family. Along with sharing our love for animals, my family and I have always been intuitive. We could read one another's thoughts and were prone to finishing each other's sentences. Our conversations would go something like, how was, it was great, uh, how was, it was great. Do, um, where, where, do you wanna go get, yes, I, I'm gonna get a chocolate. You know, talking about going to, to the, um, how our tests went during the day, how our day was, where we're going to go get ice cream, for example. And giving given this responses to that, so it was it was um, I can recount a story when my mom was really tired and we were cleaning the house and she says, to, she's like on a on a on a rampage, like a little bit frustrated and angry and you know, and she um, my sister and I were jumping through hoops to try to put things away and to help her, and we went to the another room in the house and my sister says to me. Hey, Tam, should I ask mom if I can spend the night at Julie's house? And I said, no, not right now. Wait till afterward because she'll say no now if you ask her. We walked into the kitchen and there was no way my mom could hear this. We were at the other side of the house and she was washing dishes, making noise. So when we came back into the kitchen, she... Um, she continued with her, 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 you can call it rampage. <laughs> and she stopped mid sentence. And I kid you not, she looked at my sister and said, yes, you can spend the night at Julie's house. And then she went right back into her rampage. But, and my sister and I looked at each other, no, nobody had said anything. This was a typical occurrence in my home. So let me continue. Okay. So we were reading each other's thoughts. I had never had to finish my sentence because halfway through the sentence, the other family member knew exactly what I was saying and was already responding to the sentence that I hadn't finished yet. It was not until I began living my life outside of my family's home that I realized that I never finished my sentences. I always just 
figured everybody knew what I was saying. This emp empathic ability I shared with my family was truly a gift and a curse. On a good day, it was terrific for someone to be so much in sync with me, but could also be invasive and awkward for someone else to know exactly what I was thinking and feeling. Um, some things you want to just keep private. And so as I write this, I know I am not alone in this feeling because many people have or have had the same challenges. This empathy or sixth sense um, has caused numerous sleepless nights as I lay awake in my bed feeling empathetic, worrying about others' well-being and feelings. This included my animal companions. At the time, I did not understand that I was an empath, intuitive, or in fact that I was directly communicating with my animals. It felt just completely natural. I believe we all have this capacity to foster this empathic connection with our animals. There is something about a fur baby's unconditional love that allows us to feel free and genuinely loved. And when they show us affection, it opens our hearts and allow us to love even deeper. Their love is so pure and unconditional. Having animal companions in my life saved me. They have helped me feel safe, loved, joyous, loved, feel, helped me feel safe, loved, joyous and I do not want to imagine not having my furry friend next to me and it is in that love actually where we connect with them uh, we connect to our intuition we when we love something we open ourselves to our intuition and then and it's in those moments that we can communicate with our pets and that's how it works for me anyway I'd love to hear how it works for you so let me know okay um, today this is how I feel when I work with with every one of my patients or clients. In France, you can say patients. In America, I say clients, okay? There is no greater joy for me to be my animal and, and human, uh, there's no greater joy for me to see my animal and human clients feel better. While working on an animal, there are different levels of emotional communication that happens within each session, such as initially trusting that you are truly going to help them feel better a deeper understanding with the soul connection, and then an emotional release. There are those three things that happen. Establishing trust is the first level. For example, the fact that a, a dog allows me to touch it does not mean that it trusts me. In fact, some dogs are like robots. They are so conditioned to letting, conditioned to letting people touch them that they do not care who touches them. This is not trust. However, there is that special moment during a session when a dog decides they can trust me. It might be by the way the, I massage its neck or that they simply understand my intentions, but the dog will always turn and look into my eyes. Sometimes I receive a kiss on my hands or nose with the, uh, with the more exuberant animals or the dog will just continue to honor me by letting me touch them after they have looked into my eyes. The second level of, commu of emotional communication that happens during a consultation is a deep understanding and soul connection. When I am working on a location on their, on their body and I know it has been painful to them, their eyes change and the animal com companion emits gratitude as I release their pain. Occasionally, a dog will moan. Some will push their weight into me, asking for me to massage them harder because it feels so good. This is very common in horses. Um, and others might give me the, that feels so good, but it really hurts here response, and then turn and give me another area that they want me to work on. Some may uh, turn their shoulder away from me and offer a hip to massage instead, while others lift their legs and put them in my hands to be worked on. And then there is a moment wherein we share in gratitude. The third level of the emotional connection established during a consultation is when there is an emotional release. I consider this emotional release therapy. This is the same with animal with people and animal companions. Emotions can become blocked in different areas of the body and, and may cause pain if they are worked through. The emotional release is, it has been talked, this emotional release has been talked about for, for, for years and years. Um, uh, massage therapists feel it, Reiki 
practitioners feel it. Chiropractors have seen it. Sometimes when um, when they work with people, the there's a uh, uh, when they put the bone back into place, the the, the person might start to cry. Um, I've personally felt this within myself, so. I know it's a real thing and working with animals there is always an emotional release um, while I'm working on an animal I can feel the emotion that has caused their pain many times I can see an image of an event in my mind's eye and feel how the animal felt including their fear sadness and confusion um, because animals are, are telepathic they can speak visually they can um, emit emotions they can um, they're they're truly born with this with a sixth sense and so sometimes animals will um, uh, just show me a visual of how the, their pain was brought about um, and, um, and 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 when this happens oftentimes I must fight I have to fight, I have to fight back tears because the emotion is so strong now I know myself really well and generally live in a vibration that's positive so before I start working on an animal I've cleared out all of my emotional um, stresses that I have during that day so I know when the animal releases this emotion or is showing me gratitude it's not because I'm searching for it or it's something that is within me that I am processing it is truly at the emotional release of the dog or the cat or the horse okay after this release takes place the animal miraculously changes the owners frequently comment on how the animal be became more joyful after the session i often hear how the animal actually picked up their favorite toy that they hadn't played with again since they were a puppy um, it was like the old days um, i believe dogs are empaths because they know when we are not feeling well and they will do everything possible to help us feel better and i know that you think that's true too with an animal companion, we are safe to feel joy, of, the full of joy, and to have a communion that is based on unconditional love and unending loyalty. But we are also safe to feel sad. Um, in our general lives, we don't get the permission. We don't have permission to feel sad when we want to. We've got to go hide and and show these emotions. But with animals, you can feel sad, you can feel angry, hurt, and despair, and um, and they're always there for us. And dogs absorb everything. I am not saying this to make anyone feel badly. We are all human, have complex emotions, and it is impossible to stop this. It is important to point out point this out because nine out of ten of my clients human owners have the same physical problems as my animal patients i am doing a dissertation on this study um, with this study at the moment so if you'd like to participate in my dis dissertation for my doctorate um, then uh, please note that in the messages below or send me a message, okay? Um, the connection between animals and their owners is truly miraculous and often the remedy for the dog is the same that is needed for the owner. It is truly uncanny how many times a day I find this to be true with my animal companion patients. For pets that have been with their owners for a long period of time, they begin to have the same mannerisms of their owners, but they also begin to have the same aches and pains. Most people will take care of their pet before they take care of themselves. I have realized that if the owner does not get treated, the animal will continue to have the same problem. Thus, working with people has become of equal importance and why we say pets and people too at Osteotam Holistic Services. It is this connection, that this synchronicity that I want with my dog and for all of those uh, dog owners around me. Learning how to offer healing to animals, helping them feel better, has changed my life. I found that I could care for the animal patient while working on them, be my empathetic, intuitive self, and truly embrace who I am while helping both the owners and the animals feel better. And so my life purpose is to help you help your animals feel better. Because to, if you can do the same thing that I've been doing, then I... Um, with your own pets, the relationship that you'll have with your pets becomes um, even more profound. Connecting with my dog, Abby, is especially important to me. 
With Abby, I can see and, and, and feel how she cares for me. I see when she is trying to figure things out, and I see how she tries to manipulate me. <laughs> um, however, I also see her fears and her trepidation about not pleasing me. Many joke that people often begin to look like their dogs. In my opinion, each animal also has a human persona. When I see my dog Abby in a picture, I can see her human persona and how she is growing up. Abby is no longer a baby, but a young adolescent happy dog with big smiles. Because of this, I no longer treat her like a puppy, but instead I, our relationship has matured and I trust her and guide her in her decisions instead of telling her what to do. This might mean instead of punishing her for her unwanted behavior, I can just say a word, look into her eyes, and she stops. Abby has become less anxious or fearful and now finds comfort and safety with me and others. I also understand that our relationship is continuously evolving. We are changing together. Every proud owner of a dog dreams of an ideal life with their dog. Think back to when you first brought home your animal companion. What did you hope for? What did you dream about? Everyone thinks of, dreams about something different that they want to have with an experience with their pet. And every animal is unique. Even if they are from the same litter, they are unique. Every story between animal companions and owners is different. My dream is that this book, will give you additional tools to work through the challenges you may have with your furry friend, cat, dog, or horse, and create a lifelong bond with the, the precious tech the synchronicity you have always dreamed of having with your pet now. So on that note, that's the first chapter. And so the next part of our exploration and dedication to healing our pets' anxieties begins uh, with the next session, the next episode that is called You Can Heal Your Pet's Anxiety. Thank you for being part of our, our animal community, community. and um, visit us on www.tamrashaw.com um, to have a session if you have any questions if you'd like to get involved in any of our classes and learn specific techniques um, that's where you'll go ahead and, and book okay thank you very much have a great day